Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today I thought on this beautiful spring day, I would take us all on the first garden tour of the season. So come with me and let's look around an early April garden tour. It's been a while since I've done a full property garden tour. So today I think I'm gonna to try to cover the entire property that we have at Harmony Hills Home and Garden. We have 0.53 acres, so just about a half an acre. And some of it is wooded, some of it is cultivated, some of it is lawn, some of it is uh, in need of care. But uh, let's take a look at everything we have today. We live in a historic neighborhood in Baltimore, Maryland. Our neighborhood was begun in about 1912. Uh, so it's not that old, uh, but it is over a hundred year old. Um, the neighborhood. Our house was built in 1924. It was moved into in 1925. So we're coming up on the 100th anniversary of our home. We have a half an acre, which is roughly 200 feet from the front street back to the back of the property and roughly 100 feet um, across from side to side. Uh, our house faces west and our front lawn is in the west side. Uh, our backyard is very hilly and our driveway comes up from the side and goes up the hill around the corner up to the bottom of our house in the back. As you can see, we have a lot of mature trees on our property, specifically on the south side of our property, and that casts a lot of shade in our property. And so gardening here is a challenge of managing what I have in the sun and what I have in the shade. We also have mature trees on the north edge of our property. Some of them belong to us and some of them are our next door neighbor's trees. So we are not in charge of all the trees here. So limbing them up and taking them down or, or otherwise managing the trees is something that we uh, have to negotiate around here. All right, so let's start with the front yard. Now, by the way, I'm not gonna show every single plant and talk about every single plant that we have here. That would be, you know, a two hour long video or more. So today I'm just gonna give an overview and highlights of our property. Our home is a colonial style home, colonial revival, and it is a very symmetric style house. So, uh, so far our front yard is also somewhat symmetric. That may change over time, but for now, somewhat symmetric. Uh, I wouldn't call it formal though, by any means. Here down uh, at the front of the brick path to the sidewalk, we have what I call our welcome gardens, and they are welcoming us with beautiful daffodils right now. I'm sorry, I forget the variety names, and we have grape hyacinths. We've got some Burford hollies, sunshine ligustrum. There's a rose of Sharon, magenta chiffon, uh, we have some um, trumpet daffodils that have finished for the season already. Uh, and spilled wine, Mygela. In this bed, we also have Millennium Allium that are starting to put their greens up. Uh, we had hyacinths, but they have finished their show. And we have some yarrow. I think in here also, I'm hoping that I had some great blue lobelia that may come back. I think I planted some iris uh, rhizomes in here. So it's uh, chock full of wonderful things. And on this side, it's the same plantings. The only difference here is instead of the Rose of Sharon, I have a Jack Manii clematis on the lamppost. So uh, this is an area where I put annuals and uh, I have a few shrubs in here for a year round interest. So this is just a fun little thing. Of course, everywhere we have weeds, so just ignore it. And we haven't finished cleaning up all of our flower beds yet either. So. I've got lots of work to do. You'll see evidence of all of that. All right, let's come up here. This is the north side of our front lawn. This is a shrub border that we put in last year, and a lot of it is just sticks right now. Um, but here at the front, I've got a winterberry, then four viburnums. Uh, three of them are all that glows, and one of them is blue muffin. Then I've got a China Boy Holly. Now we do suffer deer damage here, so these plants have all been negatively affected by deer, but they seem to be putting out growth, so I'm hopeful that they will recover. These are skip laurels. They're in here for evergreen interest throughout the seasons, and they're currently flowering, and the bees love it. Again, lots of deer uh, nibbling on these plants. Beauty Berry, Dragon Lady Holly. This is another winter berry, currently just sticks, but hopefully will grow. 
That's a Japanese holly, that um, a Chesapeake variety that the deer decimated. Little Henry Sweetspire. Uh, Eastern Snowball Viburnum. Again, so much deer damage. Now in here, uh, let's see, this is a Sugar Shack button bush. No evidence of growth on that yet. And this is a uh, Wine and Roses Wygela. It doesn't look very good either, so maybe these two will have to be replaced. Back in here, three Clara, which I'm going to replace because they just aren't hardy enough here in our cold winters. And in front of them, a sugar tip Rose of Sharon, which is just coming back to life. Uh, and then way back there, another China Boy Holly. So uh, this entire shrub border was installed last year throughout the spring and early summer. And some of the plants are doing fine. Others of them just can't handle the deer pressure so or the cold weather. So uh, we're going to be making some adjustments here. It's supposed to be more evergreen than it turned out to be because some of the evergreens got eaten down by the deer and some of them couldn't handle the weather. So, yeah. All right, and then across this border, I've got all kinds of things in here, um, including weeds and <laughs> things that need to be taken out. If you have any particular questions about particular plants, let me know. I'll just cover some highlights. This is a David Austin rose called Sweet Juliet, which I understand is no longer for sale. Um, and last year the deer ate it, so I'm going to move this into the backyard this season. Need to get on that actually. Got peonies coming up back in there, monk's hood. Uh, Miss Kim lilac is greening up and going to have lots of beautiful uh, and fragrant flowers on it soon. I have three Encore Azaleas in here that I'm going to be taking out because, again, deer pressure. They never bloom because the deer eat the blossoms off of them. But in this bed, I've got some shrubs and some perennials, and uh, things are coming back. We've got wild onions that are a weed problem in here, and the hyacinths have finished, um, but they were gorgeous. So um, there's going to be changes in this bed as usual. I always change things around in my garden. And then on this side, well, let's just stop here and look at the, um, the plantings. I'll back up a little bit so we can see. So because our house is so symmetric, I feel like uh, around the front walk, it needs to be symmetric just to fit in with the style of the house. But once you get outside those lemon thread false cypresses, uh, you know, to the north side of that one and to the south side of this one, symmetry goes away. And I've just gone for um, similar plants, but perhaps different arrangements of plants. But between the two lemon thread false cypresses, it's pretty symmetric. So we've got hyacinths on the left and the right. We've got um, planters that need to be reestablished for the spring and summer on the left and the right. Um, those are soft touch hollies, Japanese hollies. And then continuing further, there are some uh, blue star juniper little ones. Then um, knockout roses and then spirea. So for the most part, the plantings on the left and the right side of the walk are symmetric. I think that euphorbia is not repeated on the left side, but that might be the only thing. But then outside, down away from the front door on the other sides of these lemon thread cypress, uh, I'm using the same plants, but in different arrangements. Um, so I do have a Miss Kim Lilac in here. It's in a different spot. Uh, we've got some of the same perennials in here, some of the same shrubs. Things are waking up. Again, I have two Encore Azaleas in this bed. They're little because they're only two years old, but those are going to be coming out because the deer just eat them, and I don't feel like fighting it anymore. Underneath the window boxes, uh, I need to re refurbish the foundation plantings this year. We tried some experiments um, two years ago. The experiments didn't really work. So I've got bare spots underneath right at the foundation of the house. So we're going to be working on that this year. But I do have four Taylor junipers. Um, those are uh, two on each side of the house. This one needs to be staked so that it's straight. But um, the Taylor junipers uh, will be growing up to about halfway between the two stories of windows. And um, that will provide some symmetric formal structure. And then I'll be uh, working on evergreen 
plantings for under the window boxes. This big holly under this window, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, I certainly can't buy in <laughs> hollies at that size already. So I don't know. I might plant uh, more hollies there and then just trim this one way back and let it re reflush. I don't know. And then same thing over here. I've got these two hollies that they're really not in great positions compared to each other. So I don't know, but it's all ripe for revamping and reconsidering. I'm looking into, are there native evergreens that I could use here? Or are there, um, I, I, I don't know. It can't be anything that the deer would eat though. So it, it limits my palate. And then the other thing about this front area is that the window boxes are, uh, they are window boxes that the previous owner had used they are too small, in my opinion, and many of your opinions as well. Too small for the windows here, um, but they're better than nothing. And so I am going to use these window boxes until such time as I can replace them with a more size appropriate wooden or vinyl looking like wood, um, larger, wider, deeper, uh, more substantial window boxes. But for now, this is what we have. So I want to talk about the south side hill real quick. On this bright blue sky, sunny day, it's difficult to see uh, how dense, well, actually you can see how dense the trees are. They're mostly deciduous trees that just form a really beautiful wooded area on the south edge of our, um, of our lot. Uh, this is a Vitex tree and um, it blooms beautifully in the summer. But over here, this is about, I would guess from where the lawn stops down the hill, what's like falling off a cliff down the hill to a sidewalk. I, I think it's about 20 feet, maybe 25 feet from the edge of the grass and then down, down, down the hill to the sidewalk. So I'm out on the front sidewalk right now and you can see this is what I call our corner garden, which, oh my gosh, it's embarrassing to show you. It's even got trash in it and everything. Uh, I haven't cleaned it up yet for the season, uh, but as we walk down here, you can kind of get a sense. Our property is deep, goes down the hill, down, I don't know, right where the car is right now, that's where our driveway is. So it's about 200 feet down there. And so the south side hill with all these trees is about, from the sidewalk up the hill, it's a steep hill, it's about eight feet in elevation difference from the sidewalk up to the top of the lawn maybe 10 feet, and uh, it's about 10 or 15 feet wide. This aerial shot shows this wooded side hill a little bit better. You can see all the trees coming up out of the hill and then all the shrub layer on the hill itself um, acting as erosion control a little bit. So it's um, an opportunity and a challenge, right? So this garden used to be covered with honeysuckle and privet and uh, invasive species. And we had that dug out um, oh, six or seven years ago. And I've been playing around with the plants in here. The lamb's ear is taking it over and uh, I, I wanna get that under control. I said that last year too, and then I never did anything about it. But I, I wanna, I think this year I want to um, take out these invasive privets the invasive multiflora rose. We've got other plants on this um, this understory layer that are invasive species in Maryland, or they just don't have any ecological value. So I think in the long term, I want to replace all of these shrubs with native shrubs that are helpful to the environment. And then I need to bring a tree company in here and do some trimming and pruning to clean up this tree border, take out a mulberry that's in there that's just messy, take out a few of the branching um, limbs that are creating a kind of a mess. But then I think this could be a beautiful, naturalistic, native plant border. So that's what I have in my mind for developing this whole South Lawn area, not lawn, the South Hill area. So that's what's in my mind, but uh, no action has been taken along those fronts yet. Uh, of interest, we do have a leather leaf by Burnham that is covered in blossoms, getting ready to open up in the next few days. And the daffodils here are pretty as well, uh, but there's a lot that's not pretty, but lots of potential again. And then as we come back up around up the hill toward the house, 
this south garden is outside our sunrooms. We have two stories of sunrooms, which is like the best feature of the house for sure. Um, this south garden, we currently don't use it for anything other than transiting from the backyard to the front with the wheelbarrow. Uh, but I imagine in my mind, if this woodland hillside becomes a, um, a native plant area, then maybe in the long term, we turn this whole south side of the lawn into a woodland garden. I'm thinking adding a pagoda dogwood in here or um, some small sized crab apple or red bud or other flowering trees that are native to Maryland. Also native shrubs and then native plants shrink the lawn down, maybe even eliminate and eliminate the lawn or maybe, um, I don't know. So lots of ideas floating around. None of them have percolated into a real plan, but uh, there's a lot of potential for gorgeousness in this side of the house, but it's pretty much unmanaged at this moment. When you have a half an acre and you love to garden, then what, at least what happens to me, maybe it happens to you too. Um, I just get all these ideas and then I, I start on the idea and then I get another idea and I turn my attention to that other thing. And so I have a lot of areas in my garden that are like begun, but not yet finished. Uh, well, no garden is ever finished, but um, yeah, that south side area is something that I've been thinking about for a while now. And I just haven't pulled any triggers on that yet because I have so many other spots that I want to complete or at least get further along. So let's now go into the, uh, the north side uh, inside the fence, um, our north side shade garden and the backyard. This porch is where we sit, enjoy our coffee, have a meal, uh, rest from gardening. You can see my tools are all still out. It's kind of a mess, but that's life, folks. This garden is a shady garden for the most part. Lots of hellebores, hostas, brunera, a um, couple of boxwoods, a still bees, Lots of woodland style shade loving plants. This is a hosta area and they're just beginning to emerge with a few hellebores mixed in. Again, if you have particular questions about any of the plants, just put them down in the comment section with a timestamp from the video and I'll be happy to answer them. Now this garden gets sun in the spring, but in the summer, the sun is in a different position and the leaves are on the trees. And so the sun patterns in this garden are much more of a shade garden than they are a sunny garden like they are right now. This bubbler fountain we picked up at a local garden center. I think it's from Campania International, but I might be wrong about that. I don't know. Cucros, hostas, bruneras. Elbors, one pulmonaria in there, some Japanese painted ferns. It's my happy place, I have to say. This planter box was something that we built to try to, um, we were going to build three or four of them and line this uh, fence line with them, but we ran out of energy the year that we started it. And then the next year was when uh, the lumber prices skyrocketed. So we abandoned the whole four of them plan and we just live with one of them now. Those are Japanese hollies, um, steeds hollies in them. And then flanking left and right, we have some Nandina domestica or heavenly bamboo. And those are an invasive species and I really need to be taking them out. I shouldn't have put them in there in the first place. So there's two on this side and two on that side of the planter. I'm going to be taking those out this year and replacing them. Over here where that little bird steak decorative item is, that's a Henry's Garnet Sweet Spire. And it thrives here, even though it's in fairly deep shade in the summer. So I think I'm going to get five, uh, four more, put three, sorry. So I'll put two more on this side, have three in total. And then I'll put, maybe I'll get enough to put three over here on this side and just replace this side thing with um, replace those Nandinas with the sweet spire. These hellebores have been just gorgeous this year. I especially love these double ones that are kind of a maroon color. Isn't that beautiful? And then we've got some singles. 
My daughter-in-law, uh, mother, gave me this, which is a rare double blood root. So beautiful. Really hoping that those like this location and spread and create a beautiful clump. Uh, this is a beautiful epimedium called Pink Champagne, and it's got variegated leaves with red splotches. They're pretty, and then these pretty little flowers. I'm in the market for more of that, uh, so I keep my eyes open at every garden center I go to. I'm looking for Pink Champagne epimedium. All right, and the next beautiful thing to look at down this way is the Virginia Bluebells. I think this clump has grown over the past five years from three little four inch pots and now it's this size of a clump over five years or so and it's starting to spread a little bit down there i think i saw some over here behind that boxwood so it's just really sweet and it, it can grow uh, all around this tree if it wants to i'd be happy with that in fact i might buy some more or I might see if I can dig and divide this clump up a little bit and spread it out. I just love, love, love the Virginia bluebells. Now these are an ephemeral, so they will bloom and then their foliage goes yellow and dies back completely and disappears for the summer. So this will be bare ground in the summertime, but at this time of year, it's absolutely spectacular. The daffodil show has ended for the most part in the patio garden. The candy tuft is still going strong, and now we have tulips to look at. The candy tuft line across this um, stone wall is just so entrancing to me. I have, I've really enjoyed the way this candy tuft looks on this wall. So what I did was I got some Snow Princess Lobularia, which is a proven winner's annual for the summer. I got a bunch of those and I planted them in here in between the two candy tufts. Let's see, there's one there. There's one there. And the same thing down on this side. So when the candy tuft is no longer blooming, the Lobularia will be blooming. And those plants can, uh, if they're treated well, kept nice and moist and fertilized uh, regularly, they will grow to be like three or four feet in diameter, spreading across and spilling down the wall. So that's what I'm hoping for with that Snow Princess Lobularia. Garden is just coming along so nicely. Behind the table, there's a ring of four um, endless summer hydrangeas and they're just starting to come back some green growth I do have some plants in here that I'm gonna have to lose plant that looks just like sticks back up there by the um, fence that is a tea olive osmanthus fragrance and it just doesn't live well in our climate so that's gonna have to come out um, this ring of plants here there's four of them these are Henry's no what are they Furman's Red Autumn Sage, and there's four plants of them here. In the late summer and fall, they, well, actually early summer as well, they put off these beautiful tubular shaped red flowers, and the hummingbirds loved them so much. They used to be down in the bottom of the backyard, which we'll look at in a minute, but late last summer I pulled them up here to ring the patio with them. I'm hoping the hummingbirds will love it up here as well, and we'll be able to see the hummingbirds a little bit more closely. That's my idea. And then we have two hydrangeas flanking these stairs. Those are um, Firelight Tidbit, I believe. All right, and I love the wild violet. So you'll see wild violet clumps throughout the garden blooming. We've got some up there and basically I let them go. I never pull them out, my husband does, but um, I've been known to pick them up out of a place and move them into a, a place where I want them to be cultivated. That's how much I love them. Here's my bird feeder that I'm enjoying so very much. Got some bleeding hearts. Uh, Stillbees and hostas coming in. Now this fence border is going to be renovated this year as well. I have some thoughts about that. Uh, and we'll be uh, doing those projects as the season continues. But right now it's basically a couple of azaleas 
some daffodils that are finished and some hostas and then vinca. So we'll be addressing that fence border as the season progresses. All right, what else? All right, I came back up to the top of the hill so we could do a sweeping vista of the new backyard. This is incredibly different looking than it was when we moved in. I'll see if I can insert some footage here of what it looked like in the summer of 2015. Pretty different, huh? So we had to lose the big, big, big trees, 100-year-old trees that used to be in the backyard. Um, they towered over the yard and created so much shade, uh, which is great if you need shade, but it was too much for us. Also, the trees were dying, and so we had to take them out. We lost a few other trees down there on the back of the backyard as well. So uh, it opened up for a much brighter look, and then we started creating gardens and uh, we put up the fence, of course, to keep our dogs happy. And along the fence, we in installed some gardens. We went through a couple of different phases of the backyard. It used to be a large oval of grass. And then last September, we put in these tiered gardens here. Um, this is um, my attempt to take advantage of what little full sun space we have in our garden. As you can see, uh, so that's directly east right there. So this, in the summer, the sun comes up behind our neighbor's house and tracks up in the sky, the center of the tree. And then, um, you know, it goes around this way and sets over there in the summer. And so that means that the only full sun area that we have really, and it's not even full sun because it does have shade on it at different times of the day, but the only full sun area that we have that's the most full sun is in the center of the backyard. So, and because of the drastic hill that we have and the lack of full sun on the edges of the yard, I decided last year to create these terraced beds down the hill. So we had our favorite working crew, DJA Landscape Company, come in and create these beautiful terraced walls. Um, and it's working out exactly as I had imagined so far, we've got the grassy path that goes down the back side of them. And again, we're going to be addressing that fence line this year. So that'll look even nicer. And we've got these three terrace beds. Now, my plan is that this top one is a vegetable garden. The middle one is for cut flowers. And the bottom one is for perennials that I can't grow out front because of deer pressure or lack of sun. Uh, right now, though, this bottom one is full of plants that I had to just move into a holding area last fall. So these plants may or may not stay in this um, configuration that they have, but uh, for now, they're looking lovely. Candy Tuff blooming with the tulips. This is a pink and white blend of tulips that I picked up at Lowe's, I think. So I don't know what the variety is, um, but they're beautiful right now. And they're in all three beds, and they're just, just lovely. Um, you may have seen my strawberries video recently, so the plants are very happy. They're all putting on lots of growth. Some of them have flowers, some of them don't. Hi, Lulu. How you doing? Lulu's checking out our larkspur back there. Um, so there's a few flowers on the strawberries, but um, hopefully we'll get more as the season progresses. Uh, I recently planted some Camelot foxgloves in between these tulips, so the, hopefully those will grow and be lovely flowers later this season. Behind that, we've got some bachelor buttons, and then there's the larkspur back there, and Lulu, of course, who's our sweet doggie. In that container there, that's a twist and shout hydrangea. No, it's not. It's let's dance rave hydrangea that I had uh, pulled from another area in the garden and I need to plant it in the ground, but I haven't found a spot for it yet, so it's currently sitting there. 
and the vegetable garden is doing very well. Very happy with it. I've got three kinds of peas growing on my pea trellis. Broccoli under the cages. Lettuce is doing well. The left one is uh, black seeded Simpson. We're going to be using that as cut and come again style. So pulling leaves off of it as we need them. The ones on the right beside the cages are um, butter crunch. And I'm going to see if I can get them to head up. I'm not going to pull their leaves early. In this central section under the cages, I've got some petite uh, cabbages. Those are pixie variety and they only grow to be a miniature cabbage so that's why they're so close together. Uh, there's nothing else planted in those beds except on the edge you can see we've got onions. In this section we've got walla walla onions and then there's some garlic and there's some uh, bunching onions so bordering that bed so that hopefully that it will ward off any sort of rabbit that or squirrel that tries to come and dig in the garden. So far so good. In this section over here, I've got potatoes. You may have seen that video. And then under these cages, some Brussels sprouts. And down here, some bok choy. Now, the uh, some of the plants have been eaten by what I'm going to assume are slugs or earwigs. But some of them are doing well, too. There's a lot more to come for this vegetable garden this season. But for now, it's a really happy little place. I'm really enjoying it. And it doesn't look like much, but it's keeping me happy. So that's what's important, right? Over on this side, along this edge of the fence, got just random things. <laughs> I'm not much of a garden designer. I'm much more of a, oh, this plant looks nice. Let's buy it and take it home and put it in somewhere. So that's the design of this border along the fence so far. Uh, I do like a lot of these plants, but I also recognize that the design is not much to speak of at the moment. Limelight Hydrangea, Blue Point Juniper, some uh, Firepower Nandinas, and then various annuals, biennials, perennials, boxwood. Down here I've got a camellia that is dead and I'm going to take out, and then I've got another Osmanthus fragrance that's dead, a tea olive. I'm going to take that out as well. It might not be dead dead, but it's not performing the function that I want it to, so it's going to come out. All right, and now we're down on the bottom side, and this is the new sunken patio that we had installed last year, the same time that we had the walls built. And uh, this is not intended as a dining patio. This is just really a relaxation patio. We sit down here to enjoy the nice evening or to take a break from our work in the garden or whatever. The redbud tree that's above it is just the native species redbud, and it is blooming gorgeously right now. It will grow. I'm going to have to keep it out of the wires that are overhead, but um, the distance from the tree to the wires is deceiving in this video. It's not as close as they look, so I think we'll be able to manage that through judicious pruning. Um, I'm planning to put some annual Black Eyed Susan vines on these little trellises in these pots later on. And uh, this is still an area for continued development. We've got some dead inkberry hollies back there against the fence. Those need to be taken out and uh, a different plan for that little mini garden back there. Um, this is the Chinese snowball viburnum. It, I believe it has two flower buds on it right now. The idea for this is to let it grow and limb up into a small tree, um, similar to what Linda Vodder had in her backyard at her old house, if you're familiar with that. So uh, I've been limbing this up slowly, but surely over, uh, it's, it's been here for two years so far. We planted it two years ago in the spring. So um, it's doing well, and I just need to keep it pruned judiciously. Um, on the arbor, I have on this side a uh, Zephyrine Druin Rose. It was doing well last year, but then it wilted and died back, and now it's starting to come back again. So I'm hopeful that this year she'll be happy and healthy and climb up this trellis and bloom. On the other side of the uh, arbor trellis, we've got a Nellie Moser clematis, which has got buds all over it. So we'll be seeing beautiful flowers on this in just a week or two or three. And then down here on the back side of the, um, the grassy path at the bottom left, we've got a variety of different perennials and shrubs, evergreens, those are emerald arborvitae. So we're going to be putting a couple more arborvitae up along the fence line there. 
we're going to be rearranging some of the stuff in here this year but for now it's really pretty these tulips uh, came back about half as much as they did last year i think i've mentioned before that tulips don't really act well as um, naturalized bulbs in our garden uh, so i planted these for last spring's show and they were gorgeous and thickly filled in here but as you can see the ones in the middle didn't come back and i don't know why um, so this is why sometimes I just treat tulips as annuals. And in fact, I had the same kind of tulip over here last year, and they very much did not come back very well here. We've got some random leaves in the bed and one or two flowers, but this is why I don't count on tulips to return. Now, this pathway through the arbor goes back into what eventually I'm hoping will be sort of a secret garden area. I might not have planted the right things to make it that though. So I do have some hydrangeas, but these are small ones. Some are crush hydrangeas. There's three of them there. And then over that way, there's a Let's Dance Rave hydrangea. Um, the dogwood is getting ready to be in its full glory of blooming. This is Cherokee Princess. Um, and then back over there are the red twig dogwoods. But um, I don't really have anything planted in this space that would block the view to make this a, a secret garden area so i'll have to rethink what i want to call this spot but we do have these snow flakes is that what they're called these beautiful bell-like bulbs lupidem i think is the latin name for them they're blooming back here kind of lining this grassy path uh, back there there's a gate to the easement back area behind our fence here is a rose that I really have to get on its maintenance. Um, I need to make it go more horizontal, wrap around the obelisk, so that all the growth doesn't just come off the top like it is right now. But I think I'm about a month later than I wanted to be, so we're going to have to see how this um, evolves over the season. You can see that the, the limbs that are trained horizontally have put off a lot of growth all along the limb, but those that weren't trained horizontally have mostly just put their growth up at the top so that's a problem all right and then uh, the grass path can, you can go left or right if you go to the right then you're down here on this side behind the Chinese snowball we've got um, kind of my burgundy garden burgundy foliage burgundy flowers burgundy uh, cucaras and so forth this is another blue point. It's crooked. I need to fix her. She's not standing up straight. And then down here, this is what I was saying earlier, uh, right before development, this garden back in here. It gets morning sun and then it's full afternoon shade. Right now it's, um, well, I'll just say it's got lots of opportunity. All right, so that is pretty much the backyard. If you have, again, specific questions about any specific plants, let me know. But we can see how hilly our garden is. I'm standing in the lower patio and the base of the fence at the top of the hill is above my eye level. So we lose about five feet as we come down the hill. So it's quite um, sloped. And so the terraced gardens have really been a game changer for being able to use this backyard as a living space and a garden space. So I'm really pleased with how it came together. It has surpassed my expectations, honestly. All right, so I have a, just a few more areas to show you so that I can, in good conscience, call this a complete property garden tour. At the top of the backyard, we have this walkway uh, gate through the fence. And this little area here is what I call our courtyard garden. Um, it's just a little landing space at the top of the stairs from the driveway outside the fence where um, it acts like a little courtyard. And sometime in our house's 100-year history, there used to be stairs coming down off of this little back porch into this area. But when we moved in, there were no stairs there, and we have no need to put the stairs there. So we've just um, gardened in this area. Although when we had the bricks laid, we did uh, have them put them in in a shape so that if we eventually want to put stairs or the future owners want to, uh, there will be a landing spot here. So so this little courtyard is kind of a mishmash. It has served as a veg garden in the past. It's served as a perennial bed. Uh, I've tried shrubs in here. I've tried all kinds of things in here. 
And I think this year I'm going to be renovating this into a herb garden. So we'll see. Um, I do have an Eden and Climbing Rose, which is currently kind of being um, all tied up on this post here because my husband is in the middle of a project of restaining the fence. So to keep him from getting scratched up, I, I tied up the Eden Climber Rose, but it's time now I can undo that and retie that rose canes to the fence. So I'll be doing that probably today. But this garden has currently got perennials in it. There's phlox and uh, creeping phlox and tall garden phlox. There's yarrow. Uh, there's a spirea shrub in there. Um, some autumn joy sedum, some hosta, some bulbs, uh, and a couple other things. And it's going to get renovated this year. And then on this side, I have a new dawn rose climbing up on the porch. And I forgot to prune her this spring. So she's already started to grow. And so I think I'm going to go ahead and prune her today. And uh, it'll set it back. It'll bloom a couple of weeks later than it would if I let it go. But I think it'll be a better, uh, healthier plant for the pruning. And then underneath it, we've got this kind of glorious spring garden bulb garden here. Um, beautiful daffodils. I can't remember if I planted these or if they were here when we moved in. There are several types of daffodils in this bed, and these are the latest blooming ones. All the others have finished already, but these are just as sweet as can be, and I love the phlox. I did put the phlox in there, and there's uh, hostas, and there's garden phlox in here. There's daisies, there's echinacea, um, lamb's ears, all kinds of stuff in here. But right now, at this time of year, it is just so happy. A little wild, a little crazy, but just so happy. And then I have various pots here. I do various summer container gardens in this area here. The bench, yes, it's rusty. Yes, I like it that way. I am going to seal it so that it doesn't further rust, but that is how I want it. And yes, I do need a better um, uh, cushion for it. It's going to have to be a custom cushion because the bench is kidney shaped. But I love it. And yeah, I like it that way. This is our driveway. It's about, um, I don't know four or five feet lower than the rest of our backyard, but uh, our garages are underneath the house, which is, I think, interesting as a 1924 build. Who had two cars in 1924? That was, you know, kind of a uh, interesting commentary on who lived here. I do have a plant stash already going, lots of things in it. Um, this is where I store plants after I've bought them before I plant them out, so Lots of things, lots of projects to come here. There's some daffodils that I bought on sale, yay! All right, and then uh, down the hill, our driveway goes down the hill and around the corner to the bottom street on the right. So we've got this very difficult to manage hill here. I did some work on this spot last year um, and some of my work has stuck and some of it hasn't. So I'll have to see what I can do with this spot here. Um, I've got Vinca some hosta, daylilies. Down here I've put in a juga, which is currently blooming nicely, but I've put in more than that, but that's what has taken. So uh, I'm not sure why it all didn't take. Um, and then these are just native um, daylilies, the ditch lily kind. And then the driveway continues down around the corner, down to the bottom. And on this hill where we have our trash and our compost and stuff, this is a woodland hill. We've got Rosa Sharon here that are the wild kind that reseed themselves everywhere. We've got invasive privets here that all of this needs to be managed. I think we're going to take it out eventually, but, um, you know, one project at a time. And then this hill is where I've done a hellebore hill, and it was glorious. They're not blooming as much anymore right now, and there were also daffodils lining here that were just a glorious show about a week ago. Um, so at the top of the hill we have a brush pile. That is just where we put all of our fallen limbs and things, and it's giving wildlife a place to live, and um, eventually it'll all compost down and just be great soil, but for now that's just what we do with it. We may end up planting some shrubs kind of at the base of it along the hill, to kind of hide it from the street, but for now, I think that's fine. And then as we come down the driveway, now we're at the bottom of the hill that we looked at at the very beginning of this video. We 
and you can see all the way up to the street corner that's our property this area behind our fence between our fence and our neighbor's driveway is a easement 15 feet area and um, because of the power lines that are up above um, so we used to have those two big, humongous, hundred-year-old trees back here. They had to be taken down. We had them dig the stumps out, and when they did that, all of this mulch, which is about a foot deep, is what was left from digging the stumps. It was so much of this shredded mulch. So that was um, two years ago, and in that intervening time, these are the plants we've put in so far. Uh, four skip laurels to kind of hide the guy line and the post uh, you know the power pole from our backyard uh, we've put in three Leyland cypress which the deer have rubbed their antlers on it and girdled them I think or maybe not fully girdled them but really damaged them so I'm looking at these with a critical eye they may have to have something done with them I don't know down in front we've got weeds and uh, English ivy that is coming back from when this used to be just a wild mess back here well, it still is messy but it used to be a lot more <laughs> messy uh, this is Pacara this is a native in Maryland and it is a preferred evergreen not evergreen but it's a preferred ground cover uh, plant in Maryland. We're trying to get rid of the lesser celandine, which is this, which also has yellow flowers on it. And the leaves look similar, but they're different. Um, I don't have any actually blooming at this moment. Uh, we're also trying to get rid of the garlic mustard over here, which also has similar looking leaves. And we're trying to keep the pacra, lose the celandine and lose the garlic mustard. So this is my beginning of my Pacara ground cover here. Uh, this is Joe Pieweed, Baby Joe. Uh, we got, uh, you know, random hostas and things back in here. I have tried several times to plant Black Eyed Susans over here and I don't really see much of them coming back. There's one. Uh, it's actually the only one I see at this moment. So I'm not sure my Black Eyed Susan plan is going to work in here. I planted some Budlia in here, one up there and one down the way down there. And I think I'm going to take those out because they're not native and they're not good for our environment. Uh, and then there's the gate that takes you back into the backyard in the secret garden little pathway there. So there's lots of things in here that are just weeds. There's some attempted plants that have failed and died. Um, there's two China Girl Hollies right here that I planted last year, and you can see how much the deer love them. It's insane. So these are going to be moving inside the fence. So I've been gardening in this backyard for the last two years, uh, since we had the trees taken down two years ago. Um, so 2021 and 2022 are the first two years of gardening whoa careful um ugh, in what i call the new backyard um before 2021 we had a different plan and um anyway uh so i think in the last two years it's come a long way i'm really pleased with how the property is coming along but i do have plans for development of more areas but i really feel like i should finish, or at least do the first round of finishing the areas I already have. Well, thank you for joining me on this first full garden tour of 2023. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a wonderful day in your garden too, and I hope that your springtime is coming right along. Or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, I hope you're tucking into a beautiful autumn and getting ready to spend a cozy winter. Have a great day, friends. Thanks for visiting, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.